welcome back to another video so we are continuing with a database so i have this question um if i'm not mistaken this question is taken from the log on to it for c6 i'm not sure but i think that is where this question came from so let's also look on the different attributes of a database while we complete um this question or provide a result for this solution so here we have to create a database called tropical appliance wholesalers to keep track of their stock using the structure below so here it is given the field names the data type what you should put in the description um what we should have as the primary key and the field size it says to set the appropriate field size for the text data types so we're going to do that and it says to save the table as appliance table the image for this question will be to the bottom left corner on the screen so that you'll be able to check as i go along let's head over to access here we are in Microsoft Access and as I said in my previous video, the first thing you ought to do is to create a blank database. So when you create your blank database, you need to give it a name. So the question did say that we are supposed to name it Tropical Appliances Wholesalers. All right, so having typed our name, we're going to select Create. So here we are in Microsoft Access. Um, we looked at this already. If it is that you did not see that video, I will list it in the iCart. All right, so let us look now on what is it that we are required to do. So it did ask us to create a table. So the first place we're going to go is to Create. Now we are at create, we are going to select table design. Now we are in table design, it says here we are to create the table with the following field names. So we are going to have appliances. And the data type for appliances is text. I'm going to select short text. And the description for that, I'm going to place it right here. It says type of appliance. All right, so the purpose of the description is for a persons just to know what is it that the field is for. Just in case you're using field names that doesn't necessarily, upon reading it, tell you the name or the purpose of that field. Then we're going to have manufacturer. and that is also short text and it says that the description is the manufacturer of the appliance the description is completely optional you don't have to then we have model and for the model that is also short text and here it says that the model, we should have the model of the appliance. Or oh, the model appliance. Alright, so after model appliance, we are going to have serial number. And for the serial number, the data type is number. And here it says a five-digit unique code. So the word unique there. Something should come to mind. Okay. The next field is price. I'm guessing there, without it even saying, you should know that this is currency. And it says the appliances selling price. All right. 
So our fact is that we have that section. The next part says to set the serial number as the primary key. Hence, I was saying right here from you see the part which says unique, it should automatically tell you that you need to have this being your primary key. So how is it that we create the primary key? Select it. You can select primary key right here or you can right click and then select primary key. It says set the appropriate field size for the text data type. So we have three text data types, that is appliances, so right here. Once it is, you click on the field. When you click, if you click on the field, it will appear, or if I click on the description, it will appear. So once you click on whichever one it is, fine. And what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to come down to the bottom here where it says field size, and I'm going to change that. So you can give it any generic thing if you um thinking 250 characters characters is a lot. Um so I'm going to use let's see 50. I'm going to use 50 for all manufacturer. Um no instead for manufacturer I'll use 70. For model I'm also going to use 50. And you can leave it as is, you don't have to change it. Alright, it says now that we are to save the table as appliances. I'm going to right click right here and save. And this table name will be appliances. Okay. What is it? Appliance table. all right so now that we are finished we are going to save this table as appliance table so i'm going to right click select save and i'm going to have appliance i could just have appliance or appliance table whichever one is fine then select okay um this is your generic um Table. So once you open access a table over is created for you already once you close it it's not saved. Alright, so let us open that and that is the first table that we have created. Let's look on the second part. Alright, so here we are with the second part of the question. It says to add a new field to the table called client ID with the following data types and description. Um so it gave the data type for it the field name and it also gave the description we are also to add a new field to the table with the following attributes so we're going to have a field name by the name of soul and the data type will be yes or no i said that is what we classify to be a boolean all right so because we came out of the design view and we have opened the table we now need to go back to design view so that we can make the necessary changes so what we're going to do while the table is opened or closed we're going to while we're on home we're going to select view right here and we're going to select design view and even if it is that you just clicked on it, it would automatically change because this is what we call the data sheet view. And if you click on this, it's going to take you back to design view. Alright, so let's make the changes now. So we're adding client ID. Alright, so for client ID, it says the data type is number. And we should have the description which says the ID number ID number of the client purchases the appliances. Alright. The next field that we need to add is sold. And the data type for that is yes or no. Alright, having made these changes, we are now going to save. But this time we will not have to type in the name. Click on this part and it will take you back to your 
data sheet here. Alright. So because it is a yes or a no, that's why we're seeing this little checkbox um, here. So checked will mean yes. And the unchecked boxes will mean no. Alright, so let us now move on to the next part of the question. Okay. So here it says we are to change the field sizes of the following fields. So appliance should be 25, manufacturer should be 30, um, model should be 15, um, serial number should be long integer. We're going to leave um, price and we are to format the serial number to accept only five digits. All right, let's do that. All right, so here we are again, and we are in the data sheet view, and we're going to move back to design view. All right, so here it says to change appliance, so we're going to click on appliances, come down to the bottom, and it says this should be 25. It says manufacturer should be 30. And model should be 15. My numbers are very big. And it says serial number should be long integer. So it's already on long integer. And we should format serial number to accept only five digits. So here now, we're still going to stay in this section. Some systems will accept a number sign. While well, some system will accept the zeros. So it says to format it to five zeros. So what we're going to do, we're going to go where it says input masks, mask, and we're going to enter five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Let us save our table. Alright, and then go back now to our data sheet view. Let us test it now. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so it will not accept a six digit. Um, seven, eight, nine, six, five, four. It will not accept. All right, so that works well. All right, so I have to enter something now so that I can delete it. All right, so let us look on the next aspect of this task so here it says we are to include the caption for each of the field now what the caption is going to do it is going to um allow the user to see what is the purpose of the field so it should match the description so if you hover over it let's say somebody is entering the data the person to just hover over the field name to see what is the purpose of that field all right so here now we need to go back to our design view so here in the design view it says for appliances we should have appliance name so let us click here and go to caption and we just type in whatever it is here so it says appliance name um for a manufacturer, it's manufacturer name. And for a model, for a model, it is supposed to be model name. Going to hear those bugs. Or oh, model number, sorry. And for serial number, um, SN, and for price, it is item price. And after you're finished with that, you save your table. So save, and let us go back now to our data sheet view. Here to the bottom, you will see name of appliance. 
the manufacturer of the appliance. Those are your descriptions though. The model appliance. It says the five digit code. And here you realize that the serial number has changed based on the caption. Um, item price. It says the appliance's selling price. The client ID, the ID number of the client who purchases the appliances sold. And um, we don't have anything there because we didn't put any information there. So let us look on the next part. Alright, so we are going to use this now to basically recap what we did in our first table. So it says to create another table called client information with the structure as shown below. So let us do that. Alright. So we're going to create a new table. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to the create ribbon and we're going to select table design. So the first thing it says we should have is your client ID. The data type for your client ID is auto number. So it's going to automatically generate a number and it says the description is a client number for the client. A unique, I keep reading and skipping out words, a unique number for the client. So that is supposed to give you a hint. And the caption is client identification number all right the next one is client name and the data type is text and i'm going to just have that as short text and it says the name of the person who makes the purchase And the field size is 30 and the caption should state client. Alright, so the next one we're going to have is business name. Alright, and that should also be short text. And the description should be the client, the name of the client's business. Right, name of the client's business and the feed size for that should be 30. And the caption should be company. Alright, so that's business name. Next part is address. The data type again is text. And the description for that is address of the client's business. The client's business, the feed size is 30. And the caption should have company. Oh no, should have company address. Alright, then the next one is phone and the data type is number. And if it is that you are going to include the dash or the bracket, you have to declare that as um, short text instead of number. Alright, so it says a seven digit, a seven digit phone number. And the long integer and caption should be telephone. So, telephone number, 
the next one is date of last order the type is date and time and the description is date of last purchase from tropical appliances wholesaler The caption should be last order date. Primary key is the client ID. And we're going to save the table as client record. So the last part of this activity asks for us to set the relationship between the client records table and the appliance table. So what we will do, we will go to database tools. Let me close this table first. Go to database tools and you will select relationship. So once you get here, you will add your tables. So I'm going to add both. Alright, so after adding your table, you look at what is identical between the two, which field names do you want to connect it by. So in our appliance table, we have the client ID, and in the client records table, we have the client ID, which means that we can link both tables to the client ID. So you click on the field name that is identical in both tables, Click on it and you drag it to the same field name in the other table. When you do that, you will see edit relationships coming up and you will see client records and you will see appliance. You should always enforce referential integrity. This is ensure that the information matches across tables. You will also see the type of relationship to the bottom. So for this table, it's is appearing as a one-to-many relationship. Now there are three types of relationships. One-to-one, -one, which means that a record will only match one record in another table. So it appears once in both tables. You have a one-to-many, which means that one record in one table will match many records in another table. You also have a many-to-many -many relationship where you have many records that will match many records in another table. So those are the three relationships. So after you have checked your enforced referential integrity, set it create. And what you will see here, you will see a line that is coming from the table to the next table. So this infinity line means uh, many and the one right here means one so it means that the information in this table will be many all right so when you are finished you just click right here where it says relationship and select save and close all right so right here where it says client id is number let me go to client records ah. i'm going to go to view here the data type is auto number. Now for some systems what will happen when you start entering the data in the table is that it's going to tell you that the data doesn't match. However, there's times though when it will work. So let's see one. Alright, so there it is now. So because I added the data in the client records table, it will now accept it. So when we are populating this table, we will have to populate the client records table before we populate the appliance table. So that's it for our video today. I'll see you soon in another video. Thank you for watching. Um, like, comment, share, subscribe. Bye.